excited for Bachelor in Paradise? What's uh, what's been going on? Absolutely. Well, I homeschooled today, so this is my vice now, just to relax, have a wine, and just watch some trash TV that I was once upon a time on. <laughs> Alex, um, are you just on? Are you on the source at three oh one p.m. Pretty much. I'm on the source at twelve oh one p.m. Kels. <laughs> Are you completely alone up there? What's what's going on? Uh, I've got mum here tonight. He's uh, she's sitting next to me. There she is, mm-hmm. looking so, fantastic. Mum, now that you know what you know, having had your son on a show like this, so how yeah. does it feel for you watching? It's um, it's really it's probably more interesting now that it's really, mm. weird, but um, probably a little less stressful. Yeah, because <laughs> your son's not involved. <laughs> Than it was last time, particularly, mm. uh, yeah, the, the first show. So, mm. um, yeah, it, it's all good now. We can just laugh. And Jared's, yeah. not, Jared's not drinking, but um, I am. Oh, so, she! fine. <laughs> I just feel like it's so funny because you see them all hugging each other and stuff, and it's like everyone knows what's going on, but they all act like they don't. <laughs> And the music makes it bigger at first. Like it's I so- know. It's so curated. I think it's because he knows what he's done wrong. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe there's guilt there. Maybe he feels stupid. Um, I, well, I think what he's been called out for is huge. Like going, going on to a bachelor or bachelorette and having a girlfriend or boyfriend back at home. And a lot of she's feeling guilty for it's kind of not how the show works. I hate to say the term, but it's a bit of gaslighting. Yep. Okay. Um, would you agree? Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, he's he's showboating, um, and that's for sure. And he's enjoying yeah. it. Um, I mm. mean, he did leave the Bachelorette uh, with the, the nation loving him. Um, yes. Yes. Look, I liked I liked him. I don't mind him. He's uh, he is. Oh no, I liked him. I actually have a soft spot for Tim. Yeah, he's just a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tim's intentions are good. So I was like, I was the stage five cleaner in my season. Yeah. He, you got the same edit. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie got it as well. And I feel like, like even when I watched your season and I was like, what are they doing to this man? Like I just feel like. You know, they put different music over us. Yep. Um, they cut and edit. The they cut, yeah, they cut and change things to put it into different contexts. And I remember seeing your season and going, they're doing the exact same thing, what they did to me, to Jared. I remember thinking, this poor bastard. <laughs> like, you know, we give them the material. That's the We thing. do, of course. And because we're genuine people as well, like, we, we don't, we don't come from a place that is, isn't authentic. We just say how it is and we wear our heart on our sleeve. So they just kind of take our vulnerability and just run with it. I muck around with 10 play for a few minutes. I come back and it's a help group for uh, people who have been on reality TV. I love it. Oh! <laughs> when I saw my edit, it wasn't like I can't believe you've done that to me. It was more for me as someone who was dealing with viewers and trolls, it was more confusing for me to be like, I can't believe these people think that of me when that's just not who I am. And it took me a long time to be like, you know what, why do I care about people that I don't even really know and don't, um, you know, they're not, they aren't in my atmosphere unless I let them. TV can always turn up certain aspects of, of, of totally. reality. And, uh, you know, we, we've all got likeable aspects. We've all, we're all got unlikeable aspects. Did, unlikeable, yeah, that's right. So, you know, that's what makes it human and rounded in real life. But, you know, if you amplify the, the life of the stuff, you're a legend and everyone thinks you're, you know, a king or a queen. If you amplify yeah. the shitty stuff, then, you know. So it's that's better that's TV. It. What's with the um the threat to leave? Is it just a good? No, no, it's not even, well, it's not even tactic. It's kind of you get a bit sourced, you have a few drinks, your emotions are high, your logic yeah. is low. And then you're like, you know what? Stuff this, I'm out. And it's your, it's, it's when you feel like you've got some sort of power. I don't need you. I don't need yes. this. It's some element of control. Guys. I don't know. Somehow you're real back in. <laughs> do they get a bit of money, or how do they stop you from leaving? Is there any punishment for leaving? Or incentive? no, you can you can leave. You can leave at any time. Yeah. I think it's kind of like the producers will sit you down and. Um, 
they'll give you a lot of pros and like pros to stay, like why you should stay. Yeah. And, and you know, that's why they're producers on reality TV shows. They're very good at their job. I mean, how good would that be if you've got all these, uh, all the girls there that have the personality for the TV and then you get three randoms that nobody knows mm. and they're just as bitchy and feisty as the ones that are already on the island. <laughs> yeah. so I don't know nothing about them. Like, I feel sorry for the um, for the newbies for the reason being that the people that are on their show have done this before yep. and they know how it works, they know how to play it, they know, you know, they know the whole the whole kit and caboodle. So for these these new guys. I think uh, having the three newbies uh, is going to be good because you think about it, if you go to a party and you know no, no one at that party except for the one person that invited them, don't you make a menace of the night? Don't you just Absolutely. go... Absolutely. You go even harder. I know that's right. I'm Australian. Yeah, I would you do the same. Have the old off of the whole island just to go rogue and do anything. Yeah. And they'll get from my experiences, I'd prefer not to date someone from the franchise. But then it's also like this funny thing, like you don't want to, I, I do say that, and then you meet people that are from the franchise and they get you in a di completely different way. Yeah. And you can connect with them on a completely different level to people that um, have no idea what you've gone through or experienced. Yeah. So it's kind of, I don't know, there's pros and cons for both, I suppose. Because, well, you're dating someone from the franchise. Well, not yet. Yeah, yes, I am, but not really from the French. She was in for like a day. I know. That's what I mean. She doesn't actually understand. Still counts. Still counts, Jad. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, it still counts. Would you do well, anything I, different going back? Would you do anything different? No. Oh, I wouldn't. I am today if I changed it. <laughs> mm, that's right. I, I wouldn't have met Sam in Bali and I wouldn't be with her today yes. if, if I would not done the Bachelorette and then Bachelor in Paradise and then mm. gone to Bali. Yeah. Because I need a holiday, and then I end up with Sam. So yes, change now. Fez Lee's Fez Lee's um a poet, and he didn't even know it. They're getting a bit fresh on uh, on Facey, I think they're Alex. Yeah, you look like a mummy. Uh, but... <laughs> Yummy. All right, look at her. <laughs> she understands me, but as in I don't need someone that understands the show because yes. I don't want to have that much time. So I'm yes. separating my my romance that I have now from my mm. TV life back in the day. You've compartmentalised. Exactly. So, baby, I love you, and yes, you do understand. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> what was the um? What was the sort of uh, recalibration time for you guys after coming off a, a show like this, coming off Bachelorette, coming off Bachelor, getting back to reality, getting back to yourself? It took me a few years to actually be able to recenter myself after this. Yeah. Especially after The Bachelor. I went on Paradise knowing who I was as a person and not really giving a shit what people thought about me because my, my season was nearly four and a half years ago and then I was on Paradise last year. So for me, Paradise was a way of saying this is who I am and I like who I am and I'm going to show you who I am because it took, it, after The Bachelor, it took me a few years to actually be like, back to normal because obviously Richie was an everyday guy like he was on the bachelorette but he was still like you know his profile wasn't that of sorts of like Sophie Monk so going going on being a contestant for someone of such a profile I feel like that would change the dynamics so much well sometimes you'll be in restaurants and people will literally be doing this <laughs> yes. and you can see them and you're like I can see you trying to take photos of me eating my up. dinner. Just come talk to me. I'll literally have a conversation with you for 20 minutes. I know. It's bizarre what people will go to, the links they go to, photo with you without having to talk to you. Yes, uh, it's bizarre. I like, I like putting people in the, on the spot. Like I'll, if I see them doing it, I'll just go up to them and say, do you want a photo? I'm like that too. Just to freak them out a little bit, mm. but then they have a kick and a laugh and they're happy. Mm. Oh, yeah, because I'll be like, we, I'll be like, you, oh, you can come talk to me. It's fine. I won't bite. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, exactly. and they kind of all freak out. But I feel like when you're trying to have dinner with someone and there's people are sitting there, oh, it's so uncomfortable. Russell Crowe. Oh, he's a bit grumpy, though. I was 18 years old. Eight. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I was 18 years old. And it was at Circular Quay in Sydney. Anyway, 
group of people, there was um, st- um, street performers, and he was there with his rabbitos hat. Don't wear your freaking rabbitos hat if you don't want to get noticed. Then you're yeah. clearly Russell Crowe. And he was with mates and stuff, two, two guys. I was 18, fangirling hard. Gladiator is one of my most favourite films. I go up to him and I go, oh, are you Russell Crowe? Didn't ask him for a photo, didn't ask for an autograph. I just wanted to confirm that it was him. And anyway, excuse my French, he goes, fuck off, young lady. <laughs> I. What an so what? Yeah, so, and because I, my pride was hurt, and I'm a Leo, so if you hurt my pride, well, it's all over Red Rover. So what did I do? The top of my lungs, and my brother was so embarrassed. I go, everyone, it's Russell Crowe. <laughs> and his mate, two mates he was with were laughing and shaking their head, and he just stormed off and went off with his friends. Russ is, Russ is going to slide into my DMs and apologise <laughs> at Alexandra Nation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kira and I didn't see eye to eye in my season. She was on my oh, season. Of, um, I just think, you know, Kira is very, uh, how do I put this? She's kind of, she's very entitled, has a high opinion of herself. Um, and it was kind of, it was one of those things where she would project her negativity onto you because it was a projection of herself. And I'm not afraid to say that. I've said that to her. It was like she would she would do these crazy things and then she'd do these really lovely things and it's kind of like, yo, yo, Kira, like, how do I keep up with this? Post-show, like, obviously, you know, I came out as bisexual and then I liked women as well and she was like, just pick a sex. You're not really bisexual. And she kind of, like, really shit on my identity and I did not appreciate not that. Not very no. No, and I kind of called her out on that and said, you know what, this is not what you do. I hope you grow from this. Um, but no, Kira and I. <laughs> but Jared, you told <laughs> Especially like, you know, I've gone, just like you have, I've gone through a very public um, breakup as well with Richie. It's kind of one of these things where you know, you know what's right, you know what happened, you know the ins and outs of it. And the people that love you and care about you, they understand it and they get it. So whatever everyone else wants to say and carry on about, it doesn't matter. <laughs> when people think Bachelor, there's like maybe five names that people think of. It's Jared, Kira, <laughs> Sophie Monk, Alex Nation, all the Sage Five Clingers, all of the controversial characters is who they yeah. think of. So I think that's... I think that's why they're pushing the whole Kira thing. Obviously, got a bit of an idea from uh, Alexandra there, Jared. But what was your experience in a nutshell? We can use metaphors, we can use analogies. We don't have to, you know, get too specific. I'm going to say it was probably a lesson. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a bit of homeschooling. If it was a homeschool lesson, um, what what sort of things would you would you would you teach a kid from your time with Kira? Uh, Well, if I was in grade six, I'd probably tell my mum to send me back to grade one. And let me learn all over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, just get those, uh, get those years back, eh? It's quite interesting that the amount of shit my family probably uh, saw behind the scenes uh, in my situation, uh, they didn't like one little bit, but uh, it's, yeah. yeah. But I think when you're blinded by love and feelings, you kind of don't see what's happening. I think, like, and then... And because you you find, you know, connection and love on these shows, you, you stay in that bubble for so long in your mind. Yep. And it, it's almost like you wake up one day and you go, oh, shit, hang on. This, this actually isn't, this isn't what I want. Yeah. It's exactly what I did, Alex. That's, that's what happened. I woke up one mm-hmm. morning and I what this life is actually not my lifestyle. It was pretty chilled out compared to The Bachelor or I would say you reckon it was more chilled out? Uh, there was there was definitely elements of um, pressure. Like if, if the producers knew that there was drama or things going on, they'd hone in on it. But yeah. it was actually super chill and fun and, like, I, I loved it because I made so many friends. There is cameras everywhere. They're hidden in trees. So you'd be, like, doing something and then all of a sudden you'd see a camera go... <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. It was, like, it was a bit like Big Brother spec with that. Yeah. So there's some fixed cameras and then some yes. camera guys? Yeah. Yeah. And it just gets intense after 10, but there's always someone watching. Yes. Yes. And it's like, and, and like, um, once everyone's a bit sourced at like 3 p.m. How funny was it when you'd like go into your burets and you'd be getting ready for a rose ceremony and you'd have to wait for ages? Yeah. And yeah, then you, all of a sudden you have you, to go out. Say that again. Get your kit on, get your makeup. Oh, yeah, set. yeah, get all dolled up. And but like you were literally maybe four meters away from each other because the boys were. Like, and so you'd be sneaking in to try and see the person that you were. <laughs> like, you're giving me my rose, right? Like, I'm getting your rose. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so full disclosure, everyone got sick. Everyone was vomiting. Everyone was on the toilet all the time. We called it Fiji Belly, and it was horrendous. Has everyone caught the uh, Fiji Belly? Oh, my God, it was so bad. It's disgusting. I think I was the only one on our, our episode, our season, that didn't get it. Oh, Thanks. it was awful. You can be honest, Jared, if you got it, mate. We're not we're, – we're, Oh, we're no. Over now, you can be honest, mate, if you if – you... Jared's been in the military. I feel like he's got an iron stomach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty in the stomach for that. It's just – I mean, oh. they, they were all just doing things they shouldn't have done, eating food yeah. for too long. Uh, sharing water bottles, drinking the tap water, swallowing the tap water from it's not it's not drinkable. That's why no, they you it. don't drink the tap water. That's why they give you the water bottles. But even ours, ours, ours was yeah. the food though. The food sometimes you know you'd be starving and they'd leave the food out for lunch for a few hours, and so you'd go up to the food and pick at it. Yeah. yeah, and then everyone got sick doing that. Even now, you've got to sanitize with your hands. You've got oh to mask. yeah. I mean, oh yeah, everyone in Victoria, if you're listening, masks as of tomorrow. Yeah, compulsory. Are you guys going fashion, fashionable ones, medical ones? Have you, have you worked out? You oh, I've got the full mask? Bane mask. <laughs> so mine, yeah, so mine has like the little, um, it's like a Cambridge mask and it has a little breathing filter thing. I've gone full Bane. Now you may die. <laughs> we've got we've got patches of New South Wales where you've got to wear them, but uh, nothing. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of hotspots where it's. Um, I feel like you guys are gonna be where we are though. Yeah, there's is, is a. You, you, of, you guys have been laughing at Victoria, going, "Oh, those dickheads! Oh, yeah. They yeah. haven't been no, doing the right no. thing," and I then agree. now. You guys are gonna be locked down. There's a there's a smugness, you know, in New South Wales. Yeah, there has been. And then, um, you know, then we're like, we've got eight, we've only had eight, now we're at sixteen. And so mm. yeah. You guys are cut off from the bar soon, I think. We um uh, we we are you guys two weeks ago, pretty much. Yeah. As a mother, though, it would have been so hard to watch. I feel like obviously, you know, you'd watch it and be proud and you know all the rest, but. Seeing what your child goes through, regardless of age, they're still your child. As a mum, that's hard. That's right. The age, the age doesn't matter. No, you don't see that. As a mother, you don't see age. You just see you caring for him as your son. <laughs> good. Oh, good. See, I need that. I will. I've got it ready. <laughs> you got a lot of sun on his chest. I was going to say, it's like you, Joe. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like Jared. Jared. It's Jared 3.0 now. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. It was, it was very hot. I even look at him. Look at him. He is so burnt. Oh no, that's worse than you. That's worse than me. No, that is worse. Not now, but even then, that is worse. He is red raw. James, I'm, I'm known to be a lobster and I don't wear sunblock. When I was in Batch of Paradise, I was red every single day. Did you yeah. guys hear, see about Cass and Mary in the Ghana talking about Abby? Yes. Uh, did you? Yes. No? Yes, we did. No, I did. I did. I saw, I saw the footage of Cass and Mary talking about Abby. And can I just say that I think it is just disgusting. 
I feel yeah. like as human beings, you should, you, you need, it's to show empathy and understanding to people yeah. is far greater than shooting someone down and passing judgment. Like, yeah. and I, I think that's, it's that whole cancel culture. Like people are canceling people out for little things that they might do that people don't agree with or they do wrong or mistakes that they make. I just, I don't think it's right. Coughing sort of the new farting, isn't it? You know? Yeah. yeah. You cough in yeah, public. People will judge like, oh, yeah. You know? More polite to fart in public than cough in 2020. Um, well, next we'll be covering our, um, our coughs up with our fart. That's it. It's true. <laughs> I just caught coughs just without boys fart. Chat. Boys chat while you're uh, doing what you needed to do there. Do you know I've never, I've never farted in front of a partner ever. Really? Not once. Oh. What about no. when you're asleep? Maybe when I'm asleep, but I'm asleep, so I don't know. So <laughs> it's not your problem. I don't know. I don't care. That's their issue. Was it? Was it weird watching yourself back? You're saying you recorded episodes, Jared. Was it weird? Um, what was it like watching, watching you, in reality, in a constructed storyline that's produced and tweaked post? Um, well, the first time I watched myself, uh, I didn't believe that was me. Did you, did you just seem so so different. I just I just looked at myself and I'm like, is that what I really look like? And it actually took me a lot of time. Oh, to you it's, looked it's fine. Really... Some people have that yeah, with their no, voice. I... Like, oh, that's not my voice. <laughs> but physically, like competition. It's yeah, it's it's competition. It's um making sure. Uh, how do I explain it? Like it, it's not me, but it was a different side of me and it was a good learning curve for me to watch myself back, to know where my shortfalls were. Yeah. So it's almost like you say things about yourself that you're like, oh, wow, am I, do I react like that? Do I behave like that to certain things? I don't usually, but because the environment is so contrived, it's hard yeah. to kind of gauge... Um, if that is how you are or if that's just how you react in, in an environment like that. Yeah, are you overreacting or are you not reacting yeah. enough? Yeah, yeah. and you're like, people don't care and it's kind of in your own – you get in your own head about it. You do get in your own head about it. And I think it doesn't help when you're with someone like that as well. So you've got to yeah, of course, that. of course. What's so good about right now? I want to make sure that uh, have you seen oh. his missus? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jared's got his mask. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I do drain out these rose ceremonies. I'm not going to lie. They go forever. No, they but okay. We think they we think they go forever. But st when you're in it, you're standing there for so long. Yeah. Well, the first still photo that you need to get oh. takes about five minutes to an hour when people keep moving because they've had to be drink. So, uh, you know, Correct. A still shot that got people swaying is not easy. Uh, and then you've got to do that three or four times, and then I think yeah. it's, what, three hours? Is this, like the ceremonies time. take three hours, do they? For, or well, the longer. <laughs> done. Wow. Because you've got to walk in, walk out, different kangaroo angle, walk in, walk out, then you've got to swap yeah. sides. Let you get back to a, a Tom's cap and uh, you can finish that second bottle of wine. Alexandra? I, I, I have just opened oh, it. Thanks. So. <laughs>